morning, everybody. Welcome to Two Nerds, One Quest. It is that time of the day. Morning? It's that time of the morning. I'm hoping that every one of you is having a good day. Wait for everybody else to pop in. Uh, just as a reminder for next week, we are not doing a show because of it is a holiday here in the States. So I think everybody is taking off, meaning uh, I think Genius heads up to Family Cabin. I think John does stuff with his girlfriend, and I think Gooch goes somewhere too, but I'm not entirely sure. But regardless... We are not going to be on. I think I need something to prop up my microphone a little bit. There you go. That's a little better. Just as a brief aside before show starts, just a reminder, you can go to patreon.com slash two nerds one quest. If you want to show us a little support, we have uh, some cool um, rewards. Uh, I wonder if I added the coffee cup. I might have. I don't remember. Uh, but we do have a shop. And here's a question for you. What would you like to see us do as as a Two Nerds One Quest? Do you like this long form stuff? Do you like uh, one shots better? Do you like a little bit of the shorter things? One, two sessions? We can, uh, we're kind of spitballing here. So we'd love it if you went into wherever you get your podcast from. Give us some reviews and ratings. Let us know what you think. And here is a flying cooch coming right at you, baby. Beat the shit out of us, dog. What's going on, man? Oh, about well, five things this morning where I said, I ain't got time for this shit this morning. So, you know, <clears throat> life is what it is. How you doing, big dog? I'm good. Surviving. Brewers on a roll, but Bucks couldn't finish. <sighs> Yeah, like I feel like the Bucks had it right in their hand, and then they just kind of, kind of like what the Brewers did at the end of last year. They just kind of let it slip. <laughs> oh, I had a babe. Good morning. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me. If, if it would have been the alphabet, I would have said it was Jeff. <laughs> that is accurate. Ah, uh, yeah, the alphabet would have been Jeff. <laughs> wow, um, that was turn my camera on. Super impressive. There we go. Um, oh, no, I don't want focus. I want to show non-video participants. Turn that up. I am eating food. I'll try not to be noisy. You're really quiet, Jeff. There you go. Yeah, eating on stream. That's what people pay for. Oh, oh no, just, he's gonna just... choke on stream. We're gonna kill the DM. Yep, I was just gonna say. Well, I guess that's uh, I guess we're implementing secondary DM rules uh, <laughs> going forward. I was, I was just thinking, I'm, I'm like, I could be eating and you guys can make all the sounds for it because I muted my mic. Uh huh. <laughs> could actually get very funny. This It'd is be like Motormouth Jones and Police Academy. Yeah, this is not that kind of stream. 
This is this is not a. Enlighten us. What kind of stream is this? <laughs> Definitely not one of those noise making streams where people whisper into their mics. What is it called? Uh, what is it? ASMR. Yeah, ASMR. It's not an ASMR. <clears throat> I'm not sure what that stands for. I don't know what it stands for uh, either. Auditory, auditory sound. Oh crap! I know those first two are auditory sound. I know I forget what micro the... something <laughs> recording. I don't know. It's it. I can't do it. Those noises just drive me absolutely. I love the insane. I love this uh, Sam Regal commercial where he's making fun of ASMR a little bit for Critical Auto Role. Autonomous. That's what it is. Autonomous sensory meridian response. Meridian. Yeah. Sure. Gets you right in the meridian. Yeah, it does. You can get a response from it. Right up the meridian shoot. Yikes. The, you got to be a special kind of weird to enjoy ASMR eating. <laughs> mm. It's just gross. All of it is. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I, I don't know. I have a hard time when, when people... And I'm sure I do it too. And I'm sure it probably drives people nuts when they're when they talk, like super. And I know I do it at times. Like, like sexy? No, no, it is not. I hear you. So what's the plan for today, guys? Are we gonna enter some towers? We haven't killed anything in a while, so I feel like we need to do that. Yeah, we had one whole session where we didn't fight anything. I was going to say, that's your fault. You're rolling poorly on the D100s. <laughs> we got to keep uh, avoiding it, actually. And honestly, yeah, you're probably better off avoiding combat <laughs> in this place. True. Uh-huh. Some badass monsters in here, I imagine. I, I do have a plan for this next tower. <clears throat> F FYI, I don't know well, if we want to meta well, it now and do it on stream or just wait. Not drive us to the house. Yeah, everybody hop on my back. I'll fly. Or, or grab an arm, mm. grab a leg. <laughs> Get a couple of lot. these guys. Chocobos? Yeah. Axe beak. <laughs> yeah, chocobos. If you're gonna do that, you need the chocobo music. I don't I don't have the chocobo music. Now I have the chocobo music. They get fancy their own rendition of it so we can use it. Yeah, we'll just take that and clip it. Yep. I'll clip it, remove all the other audio. Wanna hear a run DMC version of that? I can clip and mute and loop that too. Yep, just lay that it's underneath. Tough that to ride a bird to ride a <laughs> <laughs> It's tough to ride a bird. Yeah. To ride that chocobo, you know it's tricky. Oh, now I, I want someone to make that. <laughs> Someone to do a remix of Tricky with the Chocobo theme. Are they are they on Twitter? Hit them up. I'm not sure. Well, anyway, I'm not sure he runs into it. <laughs> you don't know. You never know unless Probably you ask. Not taking on new projects. Shoot your shot, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So speaking of shooting your shot, the only th and this has nothing to do with it, but Cooch, all I'm going to be able to think about now, between now and September, <laughs> is just badass. Yep. yep, I'm into it. What's in September? We got pit tickets to uh, 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 Ghost. Ghost. Nice. I am looking forward to a week from today going to see 311. Oh, that's right. 
the Epic Event Center. Been a long time coming. Been a fan of these guys for. Or I heard almost, of them. almost thirty years now. I remember. I remember you telling Holy me about it. I just didn't even know about them. So, and that was decades ago. So, that was like high school. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it absolutely was. Well, it was just after high school. It was well, ninety-five that the Blue Album came out, and I heard about him from Jason Isaac just before that. That would have been high school for us. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. That's high school for the three of you. Fuck you guys. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure that was high school, but the, and I was like, oh, doing math. Oh, that's right. You were. I'm like, waiting for my girlfriend to pipe in from the other room and say it was middle school for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the no. elder statesman of the group. Oh no. You cradle robber. <laughs> the Do difference to... between my age and her age is less than the difference between my parents' age, so I'm fine. I I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, do I need to mute the stream now and like call family child services and No Tom, she's nope. not currently in middle school. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm biting my tongue very hard right now. <laughs> yeah, remember, <laughs> don't say anything on stream that you don't want out there forever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> what are we, a fucking cult? Yeah. The yep. Uh-huh. The Jeopardy answer is, how do you know they're nerds? <sighs> you just about done there, John. Questions. Yeah, I'm done eating. Everybody take their pre-show let me, dumps. Let me go one second. I'll be right back. Nope. <laughs> That's a negative. I'll keep it in there. I'll keep it in there. <laughs> Uh, I just, I don't know about that kid sometimes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, good stuff. Well, playing some D and D in the morning, and then it. Tom, where's the setting to hide the uh, the non-human participants or non-video participants? Uh, if you Never right, mind. it's not important. If you right click, uh, on the person all the way at the bottom, you'll see show non-video participants, and you can uncheck that. Got it. <clears throat> cool. Well, that was easy. I know Kung Fu. Show me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, when I held up the earbuds and I put them in, I'm like, I'm jacking into the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. How many movie references can we cram into one minute? Well, pre-show we have like a half a dozen already. bunch of scooby-doo references and then we did a bun hey everybody welcome back to two nerds one quest you caught me monologuing there tom <laughs> i am your host and dm jc dipmer here with these three nerds because math is hard i'm gonna catch this man with coffee in his mouth the man in red the man in the wisconsin is one tom m norman playing doug this morning how are you doing right? oh, 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 jc <laughs> <laughs> like wow scoob good morning nerds what is the happy hap 
that next guy standing there rubbing his cheek, I'm not sure what that's about. This <laughs> one Ryan Crix was cooked up. I started singing Lady in Red after you said that, and I just couldn't get oh, out of it. Oh, yeah. Cheek to cheek. So, so you two are dancing together? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? There's nobody here. It's just you and me. Don't kink shame. It's where I want to be. <laughs> And I hardly know. I'm not gonna try to hit the next note. Cause... Yeah, do it. And that's what we—that's what we came here for, right? <laughs> that last man right there is one Jeff Jacob Williams. How are you doing this morning, bud? Good, good. My connection just got weird, but hopefully it, it uh, solidifies. Because the show started, we get weird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fine. Actually, that end. was in our intro to the Packers podcast. Speaking of it, you, Tom, going, let's get weird. <laughs> Sticks with me all the time. Love it. Oh, Jeff, you got a recap for what happened last week? Yeah, I'll recap. If I start getting weird, let me know. I'll go uh, do a restart. But, You're weird. Um, You're weird. <laughs> already? <clears throat> I uh, mean, if I get more uh, weird than. As, oh. as long as I've known you. <laughs> sounds exactly. good. Though. Sounds good, genius. You asked for that. You right. sound great. Yeah, I, I deserved it. Um, so we we started with a short rest. Uh, Crixus investigating and finding an invisible wall around the crystal ball in the tower. Uh, upon investigating that, we heard a voice that said, "To enter the tower, you must complete the rite of the arcane octad. None shall enter who do not complete this rite." So then we uh, started exploring uh, ne a Near East Tower with uh, eyes on the outside and um, found, climbed it, found an inscription, which turned out to be an illusion. Um, the cor what we think is the correct one told us, sixth, hide thyself behind a mask. Um, the next tower was cracked and seemed to be made of stone people or people made of stone. Um, found uh, a saying there but it was missing a word um so we ha ended up uh getting very lucky actually in both cases in the first case uh Crixus thought maybe there's an illusion in the second case Crixus happened to have mending and we were able to repair the stone so that it said eighth stand firm in thy circle of death and consume p-o-i-s-o-n poison um next we stopped by the music hall where we uh, enjoyed an amazing concert that Crixus conducted with the spirits of the musicians that were left behind at the fall of Yathrin. Um, so that was cool. And then uh, we went to the yoga meditation adult spirit babysitting center, uh, daycare. <laughs> so I can't. Uh, Pat and Pat. We went there and <laughs> yoga, meditation, adult spirit babysitting. <laughs> Is that an acronym? What's that acronym? Hey, uh, wait. Ooh, yeah, hey. I should probably probably could make that into something. Guys, that could be what ASMR, adult spirit <laughs> meditation rec center retreat retreat. <laughs> oh, that's oh no! Oh no! Oh, the show title. Sure. Oh, that's there. That's terrible. Uh, so um. Uh, Doug started getting uh, um, a little impatient with uh, not finding anything in that location, um, but Jacob accidentally created one of the uh, nice uh, unaged bodies to turn into basically a well, first a pile of bones and then a pile of ash as the meditation center cleans up on its own uh, with fire, water, and uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, just the so press then, of a button. Set it. Just the press of a button. Uh, and after that, uh, oh yeah, and, and there were wa liability waivers, so they were not responsible for what I did, I think. Um, and then uh, from there, we were heading, we we're going to head towards the eastmost tower, which appeared to be surrounded by snow and had a pink light shining out the window. And for your weekly limerick um, enjoyment, Crixus put his bard skills to the test to satisfy this final request. The task was quite daunting, but with music so haunting, every soul in the place was impressed. Nice. <laughs> well done. 
Very, very well done. Love it. That Bravo. was twelve thirty last night. I started working on that. So. Right after Wordle. <laughs> yep. Right after Wordle. I saw that coming. I through. missed I was like, oh. the Wordle. Believe it or not, it's awful. Mm. It was that another one where this. I had four. My last four guesses. I had three letters correct, and I couldn't figure out the other two letters. Mm. And I came up with four words, and then I went. When it showed me what the word actually was, I went, oh, of course it is, because it's the simplest word to think of with those letters. Yeah. I've, I've found that I do better when I eliminate more letters in the first two instead of find them in the first two. Yeah, my so, uh, you know, vocabulary punishes me in that game sometimes. <laughs> yeah, got to start with things like laugh and plank and get rid of those C's and H's and K's. Yeah. Oh, Norm hitting us with the creepy. Oh, music. no, there we go. As you approach this tower, um, ice has engulfed the lower floors of this tower, and a pink light pours out of the highest window, a single point of illumination in a dark and out-of-the-way region of the city. What would you like to do? All right, so if I remember from last week, we were going to go to Y24, which is across some snow. We were going to have to do some hiking, yep. and we had talked that about this tower. So what I'm going to do, because I'm sure that my pear, peach, apple concoction, whatever it is I ate, that was a pear, right? Apple? Pear. Pear. Yeah. Pear. Uh, my telepathic powers are probably ending soon, and probably the pear in my pouch is probably going to crap out. So I'm going to volunteer. Doug is going to, uh, so I'm going to say, I'm going to fly over to the tower. That way, if there's nothing there, you don't have to try and trudge across this snow why don't you guys stay here for a couple minutes and I'll let you know I'm just gonna fly over to Y24 okay you fly over the snow top to Y24 um, the base door is like covered in snow halfway up um, like, like a massive snowfall like a four foot snowfall kind of blocking the door thankfully the door opens inward uh, if you wanted to try and go that way, you can fly up the tower as well. Um, there is a window up top where this light is coming from. It's up to you what you'd like to try and do. So I'm going to go up to the window. I'm going to do my normal fly up to the window, check it out. Okay, you see an elderly woman sitting rigidly on a black throne. And there's a sheen of ice over all of it. Looking at her on her head, there is a crown of entwined iron tentacles. There's something written on the wall behind her. Do I recognize the language? Uh, it looks similar to the other towers. So that's an L. Um, it's, you can't read it. A, you don't know Draconic. And B, it's obscured by the throne itself. Okay. I think you can see the first couple of words and the last couple of words. Um, is the woman alive or is she skeletal like everybody else we've run across? She, <clears throat> she looks alive-ish. She looks well-preserved. There's about a half inch of ice around her entirety, but you can see through it. And her skin looks like that of a living creature. Okay. I'm going to. It's hard to... to tell if she's breathing or not because A, she's below ice, and B, you're looking at her from about 30 feet away, so. Alright. I'm going to send a message to Crixus that says, uh, Come on over, I guess. This looks like the other towers. Um, there's a. And I'm going to explain the whole thing. I'm going to say there's, there's a woman in here encased in ice wearing a crown of weird tentacly things. How and many that's words it. do I have? That's, that's, you're at 25, Jeff was counting. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what I was wondering. I was, I was just about to say, oh, I have, a, I have a word limit, don't I? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. 25. <laughs> and you hit it on tentacle things. Yeah. yeah that was hyphenated, that. so it was one word. Yeah. Quick yeah, will relay that to the team and, and uh, say, well, since we can't fly, we'll have to. 
will have to enter through the door. Alright. So do you stay up so, on the window, Doug? Yeah, I'm just going to keep an eye out and uh, I'm a, not seeing any real movement. I'm going to just kind of do a circle around the tower just to keep an eye on the entire area. Yeah. Until the time is there. I'll the ask... Light? Um, I'll ask Crixus if he wants to to uh, ride over or fly over. Ride over. All right. I will cast um, my new spell. Of course, my mouse is stuck. I will cast Conjure Animals, and I will conjure eight axe beaks. And the snowy mm -hmm. kind that I saw in Ten Towns. Ooh, fun. And uh, we can ride three of them, and the other five will just keep pace like a like little guardian chocobos. I need animal handling checks from those of you attempting to climb onto the back of an axe beak. Dude, it's the most underrated skill anybody never takes. Yep. Because yeah, when you need it, it's like, oh, son of a bitch, I'm not good at this. <laughs> Jeff Gordon. Yep, I saw that. Ooh. We got a 21. Jacob's got an 18. That's going to be yeah. okay. 18. Yeah. You all, all three of you are able to climb up on the axe beaks despite the lack of saddle and tack and stuff and actually ride them quite well and get them to listen to you. And they sprint across the top of the snow with relative ease. They have like a webbing in their feet that keeps them above ground, disperses their weight well. You get to the base of this tower. Um, and like I said, the snow is halfway up the door. It's about an eight foot door typical door. The door swings inward though, uh, but it is closed and sealed. Um, one thing that you picked up on, Doug, around the roof, uh, the window, is the light is created from flickering pink sconces. There's pink fire in the sconces around the room. So those of you at the base, what would you like to do? Uh, can I check around the door for traps? Yeah. yeah. You can absolutely check around the door for traps. Make an investigation check. Oh, no. Oh, oh this is as bad as it gets. 12. A natural one for 12. <laughs> yeah, um, you don't think it's trapped at all. It seems like it's locked, don't... but you don't think it's trapped. I don't think it's trapped, but I think it's locked. No traps there, boss. Uh, all right. Uh, we don't have uh, thieves tools, do we? Or does it matter? We probably just bust it in. Oh, is it locked? Thieves tools? Possibly. I will... It appears to be locked. All right. I'm going to... I got. I got something for that. I'm going to knock, right? Ooh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. You took knock. A target oh. held held shut by a mundane lock or, stop, or stuck becomes unlocked, unstuck, or, stuck, or unbarred. Kook to bring in all the spells. <laughs> he's got men. He's got, got lock, knock. <laughs> he's got to pick a couple more cool bard spells that I've never played before, and that was oh, one of yeah. them. So. Hell yeah, so you cast Good. this spell and suddenly out of nowhere there is a hollow knocking sound as if something wrapped on wood and the door, there's a light that rolls around the edge of the door and it swings open and snow pours into the room on the floor. <laughs> Side note, where was that spell when Aranon was alive? <laughs> Didn't have it then. It's a higher level <laughs> spell. Oh, I don't care. You gotta live long enough to use it. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like the perfect rogue spell. Rogue bard, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll uh, I'll cautiously enter. You enter, Look, and um, similar to the other towers. 
it's similar to the other towers. Uh, the floor is strewn with pitch-covered buckets and mops frozen stiff by the cold. And written in draconic, crudely on the wall in pitch, are the words, All work and no play make Evira a dull girl. <laughs> oh, shit. Did you say Elvira? Uh, Ivira. I-V-I-R-A. Oh. Well, it's kind of disappointing, but I, I'll take Ivira. El Elvira would have been fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny it I wrote, when I was trying to catch up with my brain, I wrote Elvira, too. Uh -huh. uh, well, that doesn't seem like the right kind of a quote for what we're looking for. That would have been, um, had my had I been with it a bit more this morning, this whole tower would have been her, Elvira, <laughs> instead of this <just> Ivira. <laughs> <laughs> I would have described her sitting in the chair. <laughs> Would you have used the term he and breast? Probably. Uh, play, playing <laughs> in the background of the Oak, what is it, the Oak Ridge Boys? All right. All right. I'll, I'll tell them that that's what it says and say, you know, it really, we're probably looking for a quote that has a one of the octad numbers in it. So something something's fishy here. Yeah, I don't think that uh Valine says, yeah, I don't think that's part of the right. Can I uh, investigate the room and specifically Ivira? She's not there. You're on the base of the tower. Oh, oh, she, we're in the she's base. She's at the so. top of the tower. Okay. Wow, my rolls are going great today. So uh, in the base of the tower, then I'm still rolling a natural one for 12. Yeah, you find a lot of buckets and fish hmm. in them that's frozen along with the mops. There's a staircase leading upward, clearly. It is a tower. All right. Going up, Crixus. Going up. You, you Going up. up the next... Uh, light the stairs and you get to the next room and on the wall is written um in wine stains on the wall is I am Ivira. Ivira is my name. The floor is littered with empty wine bottles. This chick knows how to party. Well I mean it's probably been my life too until the wine's gone. Then what? Hey, side note, John, is the window broken in? No. Or do I or will I have to either break it in or go down to the bottom? You'll have to break it in or go down through the bottom. All right, I'm going to go down and uh catch up with them. I'm going to go through the front go door and catch up with them. All right. So you and the catch axe, up with them onto the second floor. The axe beaks look at you jealously cuz you can fly and they can't. <laughs> I give you get them, a bunch I of side-eyed from eight axe beaks that are roaming around the bottom floor. <laughs> yep. I give them all the feathers. One of them smashed one of the buckets of pitch and is like currently chopping up a mop handle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Makes sense. Uh, you catch up with them and you, you see um, these wine bottles strewn across it. And you saw the writing on the walls downstairs in pitch and you see the writing on the wall here. Um, it's in common. What would you guys like to do? Continue upward? Yep. I'm going to... Can, can I check in some of the wine bottles? Just a, just a normal bottle of wine? Yeah. Some of them do have some wine left in them that has been frozen solid. So you pick the wine bottle up and there's like a wine ice cube on the side of it. <laughs> wine slushies. Yeah. Mm. You make your way right. up through the next two to three floors, and they're all very similar. And you come to the top of the stairs, and there is a double door. Um, and above it, written in blood, is the crown knows all. 
This is in Draconic, so Jacob's the only one that knows yeah. it, unless he says I will, it. I'll tell him right away. That... But it's clearly blood as opposed to wine. It's very easy to tell that. Yikes. Well, that escalated. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and there's a door in front of us? Yep, a double door. Double door, wooden double door. Can I check if it's trapped? You or locked? Definitely can. Yeah, locked, trapped, yes, definitely. It's not going to be a three-peat, but uh, eight, uh, 17. 17, yeah. It's not trapped, it's not locked. Right. Having the handle, you can push it open easily. Who wants to go on first? The, on the floor. Crixus will open the door. I was going to say, on the floor before you, there's a long, plush, purple carpet with a... It's like frost over the top of it and leaving behind footprints as you walk on it. On the far side of the room sits this elderly woman. I'm... She sits very rigidly on this black throne. There's a crown on her head. And an inscription on the wall behind her in Draconic. I wish I knew what it said. I'm going to I'm going to do a search of the room while Doug is translating or while okay. Jacob is translating. Yeah, I'll I'll creep sideways until I can see what it says. <clears throat> You creep sideways around the room. On the wall, written behind the throne, is fourth. Coax a secret from another. There are wine bottles on the floor up here as well. In spots where this purple carpet is stained darker. Looking at her sitting in the throne, there is about a half inch of ice on her. And as you get close to her, you can see that her forehead is bruised where the crown is sitting on her head like it has been constricting on her head. I got a nine that on my investigation. Uh, looking around the room, yeah, and you find more of these wine bottles. There isn't a lot to this room other than the sconces. And her on her throne. Um, make a medicine check. One or both of you, or one of you at advantage. I have a plus five, so I'm pretty confident yeah. with it. All right. Go ahead and make that at advantage, Crixus, as you're looking at her. Oh, looks like Doug rolled too. Oh. Well, the first one wasn't good. 21. 21. Mm -hmm. Crixus, you believe she's still alive under the ice? Crixus is going to say that and say, it seems there is life yet behind her eyes. Tread carefully. Mm. Can I um, investigate one of the sconces? Can I tell why it's pink? It's a never-burning flame set to pink. Got it. I'm going to cast... You know enough um, about magic and seen enough of these now. It's just like the sure. other ones, but this one's pink. <laughs> sure. I'm going to detect good and evil. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Um... For the duration, you know if there is aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead within 30 feet of you. Similarly, similarly, you know if there is a place or object within 30 feet of you that has been magically consecrated or desecrated. It's interesting. Yeah, it, it turns... It turns nothing to you. So it's not good or evil? 
It's not any of the things, and it's not consecrated. <laughs> All right, I'll tell everybody. She doesn't register as Fey Fiend or Undead. Interesting. So, so not, she is neither good nor evil, guys, and this is not a... I don't... She, she's just not anything other than what we see. I'm assuming the crown is magical. Uh, sh should we light a torch and, like, melt the ice? At least around her face so she can talk? <laughs> Valene actually looks at you guys. And... She's... I don't know that we even need to disturb her. And she kind of... She's kind of not approaching. <laughs> she doesn't have a good feeling about her. Does it seem like <laughs> Ivira has any interesting equipment or wand or anything like that underneath the... The ice that we can wearing see. Wearing a lar a long purple gown. Uh, she has some rings on her fingers that look like they might be worth something. Um, the crown. But you question whether or not you'd actually be able to get that off her head yeah. based on how it's constricting. You're not sure. Professor, get over here. Does this crown <laughs> look familiar? No. I'm not from here, remember? Uh, I don't care. I just know a lot of this place. Well, if you know a lot of this place and you're not from here, then maybe you would know about the crown, huh? There were no entries in the crown in any of the books I studied. <laughs> no. Okay. I apologize. I mean, it's unlikely she would have put a crown like that on her head voluntarily. Well, or... And the, I mean, the things that we read all work and no play makes Ivira a dull girl I'm Ivira Ivira is my name the crown knows all <clears throat> crown seems to be important but well, I is mean, it important to us I say we mark this place mentally and just if we have to I mean we can always come back and Take the crown, I guess. Was was the crown knows all? Was that the was that the topmost? Yeah, that okay. was outside the door, written in blood. What's what's written in the room, genius? Or Jacob? Uh, it was fourth, fourth uh, coax a secret from another. So, mm -hmm. thing that I'm been wondering about is uh, this is the first one that didn't ask for a specific item but the other three were looking for a, a, a wand a mask and poison so I wonder where we're going to find those things so I'm wondering if there's four other things we don't know are there four other items we're going to need or things we're going to have to find and if one of them is a crown at least we know where one is it's a good point genius well it sounds like the crown reads your mind right is that what it sounds like so maybe the crown is what is needed to coax a secret yeah i mean um, it knows all so it either knows all your secrets or it can tell the future somehow i'm not sure all right. do we want to disturb her somewhat i mean like is there enough ice that we don't think we could push her over or no, like it's only she... like a half inch thick. Like you could probably just take your weapon and just smack yeah. it a little bit and chip it off her if you wanted to. So get like a hand behind her and push her out of the right? throne if you wanted to. The ice would shatter all over. Yeah. She might yeah. shatter all over. That's a possibility. T two style, T two thousand. Yeah. Um, Uh. 
All right, I say we leave it until we need it. Yep. It, it'll probably be, be a pain in the ass to come back and get it, but if we can stop from disturbing something evil until we absolutely have to. Lulene sighs heavily in relief. <laughs> She's spooked by this crown. <laughs> She's a little paranoid. I'm going to yeah. Yeah. look at her and say, do you know anything about this crown? It's a crown of tentacles, an iron crown of tentacles, and she's bruised around her forehead. I know enough to not touch it. <laughs> yeah. I can't you can toss that. a wine bottle I mean, in her lap and see if don't, anything happens. Don't take my word for it, but that shit looks cursed. <laughs> I'm not touching it. <laughs> yeah, valine has been a little paranoid recently, so, I mean, oh, take shut that up. with a grain of salt. <laughs> Yes, All I'm right, a little paranoid, Crixus. We're in a... Or a Jacob. God, I can't even get your names right. We're in a long <laughs> dead ancient city and there's magic all over the freaking place. Yes, I'm a little paranoid. I know what magic can do. Maybe you don't know as much as I do about magic, but it concerns me. Oh, boy. <laughs> she, goes and, she goes over and stands by the door. <laughs> her paranoia is really starting to get to her. All right, let's Into go then. Now. Uh, all right. Well, Jacob's not going to do something without the... Uh... Okay, from Express the other written so. consent of the group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't. They didn't sign the waivers yet, so <laughs> all actions performed. Here, can you sign these for me? <clears throat> I'm gonna yeah. go touch the crown. <laughs> In, indemna, indemnification. What is it? In, indemnification. Indemnification. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm all right. Go downstairs. You go downstairs. Okay. Yeah. None of the wine bottles are sealed. Are they everything? Every one of them is open. Every one of them was open. Okay. All right. Okay, let's go down the here. stairs. Do you close the doors? Do you spend the time moving the snow and closing the doors? No. No. Uh, all the no. as you guys get downstairs, all the buckets are smashed, and the broom handles and everything. The axe beaks have just been axing away. Shop. Mm. Yep. Just. <laughs> Destroying wood, because it's what they do when they're left alone. Mm. Just food for thought. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we have it for... Excuse me, sorry. total of an hour, so we probably can get can get back out of this area before we lose them. Yeah. yeah if you want to all make animal handling checks, those of you that will ride them, I am assuming Doug will fly. Mm -hmm. Yes, Doug can fly. Doug fly. Um, <laughs> Doug fly. Twenty-two. I'll take it. I'll take it. Sixteen. Uh, where is it? Loading. Loading. Animal handling. Oh, quit, Eggy. Aren't oh, you no. supposed to be better at these? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Valine struggles. <laughs> she ends up in the snow several times. <laughs> um, Try a one different point. one. They they might have a different temperament. And. and uh, after having the one walk backwards and buck her off, she does listen to you, Jacob, and tries a different one. And this one's more responsive to her. <laughs> she is able to uh, hop on it. And you guys head out over the snow. Where would you like to go? Uh, I'm going to lead the way. Uh, and We're go going to... north right? Yep. The... So we'll stop at the first pillar that we come to, which is, what is that, 20? Why 20? Okay, on your way there, Doug, I'd like you to roll D100. For me. <laughs> 60. 60. All right. You see before you, or not before you, but below you, floating... Um, there is a hand, a magical hand, um, probably about 10 feet across. It's big and purple and just floating there along. It's going to run into the group. So I'm not able to swoop down to the group and stop them before the hand gets there? Uh, make, oh, what would this be? Make an intelligence check. 
find the quickest way into the group. Seven. Seven. Uh, yeah, you double back and you swoop, but you are you are racing this hand, and you're going to get there about the same time it does. As I'm flying towards them, I'm waving my hands and pointing down and waving my hands and pointing down. Make a, make a perception check. Uh, Doug, or not Doug, uh, Crixus and Jacob. All right. And Valine's going to make one as well. Can I make a Valine performance has... check to get my point across? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 12. Actually, go ahead. Jeff Gordon? Yeah, Crixus, you see him easily. He's pointing at something, and you look down, and you see this giant floating. Actually, you're familiar with this. This is, it looks like a massive version of Bigby's hand, being a bard. Sure. Um, I guess I alert the team to it, but I, I can't tell if I'm, I fear it or not. So I'm going to tell it. the team we should go around. Okay. Our axe beak should be fairly maneuverable. How, how um, are you going to try and go gonna, up into the snow or where are you going? Try yeah, and go do around a couple it. of cool series of hand checks like. And just kind of alert everybody to where we should be going. Um, and then try to go, I guess. Kinda... I would assume go through town, huh? Through oh. more of the town area, yeah, versus mm -hmm. the snow. Try and cut through that. Um, like the area between Y22 and Y20. Mm -hmm. and you want to cut through the buildings yeah. there? Yep. All right, Let's I need you guys that. to make a stealth check. Doug, you don't need to participate in this. This is the three of them and the axe beaks. So it's a group stealth check. Nine. She had Six. A nine. Six. You guys are um, the hand does notice you. Um, All right. This is initiating um, a chase at this point. So you guys pull right, through the building. Uh... What, what type of obstacle are you going to try and bypass Crixus because you've led this charge what would you like to what type of obstacle would you like to try and bypass or go through or go over to try and dissuade this thing from following you um I think we want to try to go like play the around the block game or try to you know kind of make some turns and lose it okay so just flat out speed and trying to make some corners I when go ahead the first and... uh, the first time we make a, a maneuver that Jacob knows is intentional, um, he'll send four of the axe beaks back at it, at it as a okay. distraction. Yeah. Um, make a um, make a dexterity. Yeah, because they follow uh, they follow verbal commands. Actually, let's let's use um, acrobatics here. Let's so make an this acrobatics is... check, the two of you. All of us. Yep. Except Doug, who's above it. It's okay. Fifteen. Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah, you guys duck around the corner. Uh, the axe beaks turn back. The four of the axe beaks turn back, and you hear them start fighting with this thing and there is sounds of combat behind you and magical um, destruction and walls caving in and quite the calamity and you are able to move forward find your way to Y20 without much issue so sending the axe beaks back to fight it was a good idea <laughs> nice. um, yeah it was I was trying to figure when I would cast it, I was like, well, do I really need eight of them? Uh, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, what do four you do four with might have been a bit many to send, but you still have one that no one's riding. So. Yeah, in case Doug needed a, a mount. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, but we probably don't have them too much longer if they only last for an hour, and this will be our second building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll uh, leave them outside the building this time. Okay. Okay. Is there a window I can perch in? Um, the top of this tower is shaped like an axe blade, and a red light shines out from a slender window high overhead. I'm gonna peek in the window. There are red orbs that dance like fireflies around this room, about 30 feet in diameter. It's an octagon from what you can see or tell. There's a large unlit brazier in the center of the room. And then there's eight alcoves. You assume there's eight. You see four of them through the window. Um, each filled with ice. There's ceilings hanging, or ceilings, ceilings hanging off the ceiling. <laughs> Icicles hanging off the ceiling. <laughs> Overhead. You guys approach the base of this tower, and the door is blown open and half burnt off. Uh, there's scorch marks outside the door frame that look like lightning may have hit it at some point. Um, you step in and some of the, some of the stone in the interior of the building is like washed clean as if acid had been dripping down the wall. What would you like to do? Is the window broken open? And the window is so narrow you wouldn't fit through it. Okay. I'm going to fly down real quick to the group and tell them what I saw. So the orbs and okay. the... Um, did you see any? Did you see any writing on the wall? I could not tell. All I saw was the orbs, and I'm assuming okay. I didn't see any writing. If it there's was a different. lot of ice in this room, at the top, ice coals, ice on the walls. There might have been writing on it, but it's below ice, and it would have been difficult to read at best. I'm sorry. Was the door open? The door, yeah. The, oh, the door downstairs, yeah, is open. It's broken. It's burnt, and okay, I'm like, going. It got struck with lightning. Yeah. Doug's gonna go in first. All right. Enter the room. Like I said, the interior that looks like acid had been dripping down the walls at one point and just kind of washed some sections of the walls clean. Like, like it came from upstairs, or like someone was. Washing the walls with acid, like, did it, like it dripped from upstairs. Hmm. It's not a good sign. Um. So the, the room is pretty much empty then, or yeah, it, it's destroyed pretty much. Hmm. There's stairs. The stairs are made of stone. A stone spiral staircase on the outside of the tower. Okay. Head on up. Moving heading on up. up. Heading on up to the next level. Uh, similar uh, acid looking stains on the wall. And I say stains, but it's like cleaning, clean spots on the walls from the acid. This room, the, the, the furniture in here looks like it had been set fire. Like a massive fire was in here. It's... As you continue up the next floor, there's more of these. They're more prominent. There's even more of these acid-washed wall sections. Um, one of the tables in this room is just splintered and shattered like it was struck by lightning. Some of the chairs look like they were burnt. Hmm. You reach the top of the room, or the top of the tower, and the doors are hanging from their hinges. Uh, looked like lightning again struck these doors and shattered them outward. And there, you see beyond the shattered doors red orbs of light 
moving about this room. Looking in, it's a 30 foot diameter oct oct octagonal chamber. Um, there are alcoves in the walls frozen over with ice. Um, there is ice and icicles hanging from the ceiling. Stepping into the room, you can see the floor looks like it's been acid washed. And the behind the icicles in the ceiling, you can see some writing. You can't tell what it is, but it looks like there's writing behind the ice on the ceiling. And in the middle of the room is a 10 foot diameter, very large brazier. That was two of my questions is how do we melt the ice and does anyone have any place to burn it? So now we have a brazier. Question is now, do we have anything to burn? Is there anything in the brazier? Like any yeah. ash, yeah. soot, sticks, bones? It's some, combina some strange combination of like an oil and wood. Hmm. I think we just want to light it, right? See what happens. How do you light it? Man, Any ideas? Do you want to? Do want to light it with magic? Otherwise, I'm sure that I've got a uh, tinder box. I don't think we need any magic. So there's a room with icicles. There's a lot of acid-washed walls and floors, and the icicles the seem to be hiding. Hiding the, the communication. Can can we see in the in the alcoves? Can we see through the ice or see what's in the alcoves other than ice? It looks like more ice. Like they're iced over. Um, they're, the walls in this room are not acid stained or cleaned. Oh, okay. Just the floor. <clears throat> Just the floor. All right. Um, I have a how torch. About... So if we light one of my torches, I can kind of go around and melt things and if you like there's a 10 foot brazier in the middle of a room that's got oil and wood in it that mm -hmm. Crixus is inspecting and seems All like right. it's going to light Let's, up really yeah, easily got... if you put fire to it I'll light a torch with a tinder box I think I'd rather throw the torch than stand next to the brazier when it's lit so um how high is the ceiling? Is it, is it also 30, 30-ish feet or? Mm, 20 feet or so. Okay. Unless, unless Doug, when you want to drop it in the brazier, I think I'll just throw the torch in there. It does not seem like a good idea to fly above the brazier and drop something into it and have it explode <laughs> up into me. All right, everybody brace <laughs> yourself. I will uh, tinderbox, light the torch, and toss the torch from... 20 feet away. Make Well, it's 10 feet in the middle of a 30-foot diameter room, so like Sorry, from the door? <laughs> okay, I will throw it from 10 feet away. Yeah. From the door, go ahead and make a dexterity check. Or ranged weapon attack, if you'd like. <laughs> oh, ranged weapon would have been better, but... Uh, oh, no! Six. Six? That's enough. It lands right in there. It's not hard to hit. Okay. You're trying to hit a 10-foot circle. <laughs> it would have had to been less than five. <laughs> it hits, throws a you throw it in, The torch lands in the oil, and it... <laughs> and lights, and you feel the warmth instantly um, uh, fill the room. <laughs> and it takes all of maybe 30 seconds until the icicles start dripping. And as you stand there, the, the ice all over the room, the walls, the ceiling, and everything starts collapsing and dripping away, and large chunks of it flake away and hit the ground and shatter. Icicles occasionally fall from the ceiling as they melt, as sections of the ceiling melt and no longer hold to the ceiling. Can just check and make sure that the melting ice is water and not acid? The melting ice, it, it's melting? In the alcoves, it seems to reveal 
more ice that doesn't seem to be melting that's green yeah stick a finger in there i'm sure it's fine <clears throat> do you stick do you go over and stick a finger in there doug hell no all right good boy um <laughs> the ice starts falling and chipping away and after about 10 minutes uh, the walls are melting at a similar rate. And you read an inscription in Draconic, Jacob. It says, Fifth, quench the flame in thy palm with ice. And I need you all to roll initiative as eight gelatinous cubes oh, no. slide out of the alcoves. Yeah, that makes the sense. Same time. Yeah. You know, that was what I thought when you said, "Oh, it's not melting." I'm like, "That's not like gelatinous cubes in there." That would that no, that can't be. That's impossible. Not impossible. <laughs> not impossible. Probable. Right. Fight or flight. Here we go. Well, you are all by the door, but the door's broken. So. All right. Well, good. I don't have to decide first. So let me just pull up here. Let me pull. I'll pull this one up just because it'll be easy to do. Um, all right, cool. You guys all rolled? 11, 13. I have 11. Six? Six. Right. Yep, okay. Yep. Let me get Valene in here. I got a 14 on my she initiative, a, by the way. She had a six and. Um, let's give a roll for them. Do, do, do. What is their roll? Oh. All right. You all get to move before they do. Oh, my goodness. So, Doug, what would you like to do? You're first. So, as a free action, can I just say, let's just get the hell out of here? Yeah. You can absolutely say that and then yeah. start moving out of here. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, let's get the hell out of here. Fuck these guys. I'm running. And I'm going to go down the stairs. Doug takes off full speed. Move and dash. <laughs> yep. Get out move, of the tower. Move and dash. Crixus? A duck's and a dash and I move behind a tree. Um... <laughs> <laughs> It, it seems like we've got the capacity to, um, it, is it obvious to Crixus we would be able to all get out before the yeah. cubes would, would, uh, all right. So yeah, you're looking um, at the situation. You're at the door. The closest one to you is like 10 feet away okay. and, and Doug's already moving and Jacob looks like he's about to take off and Valine is back. Yeah, stepping she, backwards like everyone's she's, prepared to just take off she's probably just peeking in the door anyway um yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> so let's uh, uh crixus is gonna yell out oh the cubes we don't want to mess with those let's get out of here and then uh bolts for the door dash double dash valine's paranoia is gonna put her ahead of jacob in the order because they're both at six. <laughs> She's just running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jacob, you're the last one standing up there. All right. <laughs> Can I do one uh, one last investigation of the room to make sure that there isn't anything revealed that we might regret leaving behind? <clears throat> yes. And that's going to take an action, so you'll only get yeah, them. Not that's that fine. <laughs> that's I think cubes aren't fast. <laughs> they're, they're, they should be slow. 26. 26. Yeah, the only thing you see in the room beyond that was the draconic writing on the ceiling. Okay. Then I will just use my uh, regular movement to uh, 35 feet, go right. catch part way up. I will take us out of initiative, but I need to ask you guys, are you doing anything to try and hinder the gelatinous cubes? Is there anything we can throw in its way? Like, I, I don't have anything that would really... We close the front doors... Uh, the, the they front were door blasted open. <laughs> so I think we're in trouble here. No, I think we're just gonna we let them loosen the <laughs> let them loosen the city. 
and at some point we might have to like deal with them. I, th I think it would be easier to fight them out in the open anyways, as opposed to a cramped room. I mean, that'd be interesting. Stand outside the door and pick them off as they come out. I mean, is um, there a way that we can hinder their movement? Are there any bookshelves we can topple in there? <laughs> We're going to need something acid resistant, I think. You could grab a bunch of... um. Yeah, like the the furniture and stuff. You could try and cram a bunch of pieces of furniture in front of the door. Are your chocobos still alive? Uh, um, they're not going to make it very... Chocobo yeah. meat shield. Um, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think we have anything permanent uh, uh, other um, unless we were to like collapse the the door or something. So if the door's blasted in, we should be able to prop that up against the opening, right? Like put it it's sideways? in splinters. Like it was struck with lightning. Oh, like splinter splinters, not yeah. Chunks. It's not. Okay. It's not pushed in. It's not knocked in. It is blasted in. <laughs> it's in several hundred pieces in the interior. Did we pass any furniture? Uh, nothing that was solid. Everything was either burnt or hit with lightning. Yeah, so I guess the answer is no. We have to let it out unless... <laughs> un un unless, I don't know. I say... I mean, you get far enough away from them, they may stop being interested in you. Yeah. There's I say we choke a bowl, meat shield them, and we just run to Y21. Do it. Alright. Yeah. Send the last four chocobos in the door, and we'll just walk to... Okay. We don't really have long-term plans around here, so... <laughs> yeah, gelatinous cubes, they'll clean up the streets. Yeah, there you go. You got street sweepers now. <laughs> the 60-foot-tall uh, obelisk of black stone stands before you, and its surface is covered in arcane ruins projected from the ground. Or, it projects from the ground, sorry. My bad. There's a thin crack that is formed on one side of it, stretching from the obelisk's base to its middle. Uh, I'm going to fly up to see if there's a window. There are no windows. This is a solid structure. Um, You can make an arcana check. One of you are at advantage, or two of you. As you're looking around at the all the different, um, I'm guessing Valine's inscribed on it. Valine's probably the best at that. Uh, Valine has a yeah, she's got a plus seven. You guys want her yeah. to do it? Yes, please. I think so. We'll have her do that at advantage. Gets a seventeen. Um, she's looking at it and she recognizes that the runes are the eight, all eight schools of magic are on this. And there's a ninth rune that she sees. This, the, she, she consults Professor Scan. She's like, have you seen something like this? Is this... Is this what I think it is? Yeah. Yeah, I believe it is. This this ninth rune is a rune relating to chronomancy or the the controlling of time. Hmm. Did we just join can't. the Wheel of Time multiverse? We can't activate this though. We don't I don't have anything powerful enough to activate it. Looks like it's cracked too. I don't. How how does one activate an obelisk of runes? Channeling power into the from the magical item. These obelisks. There's been several of them over the 
course of time. For what I'm, if this is what I think it is, we've heard of ones in um, below. Um, crap, can't think of the name of the city. Hang on a second. Water deep. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> There's one below water deep. I've heard of one out in the jungles of Chalt. Um, there's several of them. I, hmm. Even if I had the means to activate it, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous too. All kinds of stuff could go wrong, especially with the obelisk being cracked. But the chronomancy rune on there, we... Time travel's a dangerous thing, she says, and she walks away. <laughs> well. Hmm. I don't think we have any answers for this problem yet, do we? Is this related to the number towers that we've been messing with, do you think? Do you think we need to come here and perform the ritual? Probably. Well, there's the eight pieces of ritual, and she said there's eight schools of magic. Well, nine. But she was seemed surprised at that last one. There's been a long rumored school of magic that no one could find any um, proof of. Hmm. Well, I, I, I mean, we'll have to come back to this, I guess. Is there anything Unless... else that we can see around this area? Any what that you can see around this area? Anything else that might help us, like platforms or something where we would put these magical items or anything? No. No, it's just this obelisk protruding from the ground, reaching towards the sky. <laughs> In the distance, you hear something growling. I don't know if you can actually hear the dogs in the other room, but that's we're <laughs> cueing that. <laughs> mm. In the distance, I hear something growling, so you hear something growling. <laughs> what would you like? Reality to becomes fantasy, or the other way around. Uh, I'm. I mean, I'm tempted to like spend a cantrip on. Uh, just seeing if targeting the tower with different schools of magic does anything, but it seems like that. It seems like Valine would be the one to. I don't think that we have enough to light up. She's them walked all, away and gotten kind of. I'll, you can just see right. her. She's about fifty feet away now. <laughs> Perfect. She's never. I'm gonna walk to the um, the far. I'll walk to the far side of the tower. And I will uh, cast light on the far face so that it wouldn't shine brightly. Uh, and if it matters, it's an evocation cantrip. What do you cast? Just long light enough to see if it does anything on the obelisk itself, or yeah, like on on a rune on the obelisk. Maybe I don't know which one. A rune specifically. Maybe you target one of the runes, and the rune lights up, and it's pretty. And you have light for the distance you need and all that, right it i'll seem to do anything if, out of the ordinary for what light would do <laughs> you dismiss yeah. it and it goes out okay just seeing if it if it matters okay all right well do we want i assume we don't want to go back towards the uh the, the tower we came from so Keep heading, uh, heading head west. west. I think head just around. make a note that this obelisk does seem to be important for us to perform the ritual and then move on. Agreed. So then we would have to head... Be, can we... Obviously we can't tell because of the tower, but I'm assuming we can go behind and continue yep. west behind it. Yep. So I'm going to kind of fly up in the air 
do, uh, and I'm going to take a look back to to the tower we just, not the one we just left, the obelisk, but the uh, tower tower. The Where the, the red light lightning's cubes were? Yep, and I'm going to see if they the red are light district. out and about. There are two of them that are out of the tower and roaming around the ground. But they're not coming towards us at all. a slimy, very clean trail <laughs> of acid. I um, mean, technically. I could uh, I could summon Tika. She would uh, be immune to acid, and while she wouldn't do much damage, she eventually her teeth could rip them apart. But it's gonna cause some noise and some mess. Nah. I was gonna say, does she need air to breathe? Um, that's a hazard with gelatinous cubes. If you end up inside them, <laughs> I'm gonna say probably. I would think so. So yeah, you see a couple of these gelatinous cubes walking around or sliding around the base of the tower. Which you right. head towards what Y seventeen then? Yep, we're gonna fly straight. Well, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna scout ahead, uh, since I'm in the air and I seem to have a good vantage point. Um, I'm gonna cruise towards Y seventeen. Roll D one hundred. God damn it. <laughs> Hey, there's shit walking around the streets. Don't, don't, goddamn it, me. <laughs> You're scouting. I'll goddamn it you if I want to. Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. Oh man, the higher numbers are worse. Oh, I don't you know. You see a group of actually roll a d6 for me. Six. Six. You see a group of six, um, with what you've been told are called nothics. Um, they are wizards that slowly went mad. That were remnants of the city. And the magic of the city weighing on them. Do they see me at all? Nope. Alright, I'm gonna fly back to the group. Uh, and stop them. Uh, is there any place that we would be able to hide is it going to be like a city kind of type of thing behind that tower yeah yeah okay. there's there's city and snowfall it's similar to the area that you just okay. came from that's kind of half city and half snowfall i'm going to okay so i'm gonna fly back to the group i'm gonna say okay there's six things wizardy things up ahead um we we need to we need to sidetrack through through this town through this area uh keep your head down unless you feel like battling them but I feel uh, like battling the gelatinous cubes would have been easier this will require a group stealth check at advantage you all have advantage on this because Doug's assisting with flying overhead and explaining where they are I'm gonna do I need to do that I'm gonna because I'm gonna take flight again no you don't need to do it I'm a, before I take flight, I'm going to say, keep your eyes on me as well. I will direct you as to where they are. You said that advantage. Had advantage. Yeah, had advantage. All right, 18. All right. And again, good thing for advantage. 16? 16, yeah. You guys manage, with Doug's help, you manage to avoid the Nothics on your way to Y-17. This low-domed uh, building, uh, the top of it is wrecked and open to the elements. Uh, the door is open. And as you walk inside, there's, there's a theater with a large stage. And seating for more than a hundred. There's a backstage area and icicles hanging from the sagging balconies. And rime-frosted masks leer and grin from its fractured walls. Hey, we need, uh, we need a mask. And possibly a mask for each of us. I, I would agree. I think we get a mask. You want to try and take a mask off the walls? Uh, right. I, before we do that, I'm going to uh, 
detect good and evil again. Okay. You do not detect the presence of anyone in this building. All right. Are the masks um, decorative? Are they are they different from each other? Yeah, they're all different. The one you got your comedy and tragedy, and I mean, there are all kinds of different masks from all over. Are there any bird masks? Yep. I would take one that looks like a bird. You pull one down that actually looks like a um, like the old. Uh, masks of the plague doctors oh Long yeah snow mm, cool i kept that all the cool. stuff in is there any uh like fox yeah masks yeah yeah and then you pull one down yeah. fox and the interesting thing when you pull it down it it's a fox's head but rimming it are nine bushy they almost look like tails. Like they're actually supposed to be representative of being in the distance. Mm. A nine-tailed fox. All right. Yeah, Jacob would look for something a little more draconic with, you know, like spikes and spines and mm -hmm. snout and teeth. And you're able to find one, and it, it has a, um, at the base of it, like, right where the mouth is there's a long protrusion of what looks like some sort of breath weapon coming off of it nice. all these masks are very solid and well made um when you take them down there is like frost on them and it, as you hold it it slowly warms up and is uh <clears throat> excuse me is warming up and becoming just an object that you're carrying. Is cool. Elaine going to grab one? She looks around nervously, and she finds the most plain <laughs> mask that she finds. Um, she She's looking at, and she looks at the tragedy mask that she sees on the wall, and she's kind of like, no, no, not that one. <laughs> She goes and finds yeah. the one, that, the comedy mask, the one that's smiling and laughing and happy. She goes and finds that one and grabs it. And doesn't actually look at it a lot. She just kind of, <laughs> you guys, we may need one of these. I'm tucking it away. Awesome. All right. I guess I'd rather know now than later. I'm going to put the mask on and see if anything happens. You put the mask on. It's a little cold on your face. You can see through it fine. It's a little awkward. The the breath weapon kind of bumps your armor occasionally as you move your head, but other than that, it it's a mask. Good deal. Looks good on you. Better than the alternative. Mm. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> mm. uh, I'd like to investigate the rest of the building. See if there's anything else. Interesting. You go up on the stage and you're moving around and backstage there's a desk. On the desk there's a pile of uh, five like they're like five packets of paper. Um each one's different on on, on the top of one there is a um a gentleman with a noose around his neck and the noose is being pulled up slightly and his neck is turned off to the side. There's one that is clearly in the back of a gentleman standing with, he's got his hands, both his hands behind his back, but he's holding a dagger upright against his back. Um, there is a woman with long hair on another cover with a fairy whispering in her ear. There's another one of a person that's kind of standing there cowering a little bit, and there's a giant demon leering over the top of it. Um, and then the last one's a uh, guy in Fool's Motley doing a handstand. Hmm. 
Opening the books, you realize these are scripts. <laughs> They're all a script of the same show. Interesting. Is is there any other rooms or anything off of the main area that we could take a look around in to see if we're missing anything? There are in the, your typical backstage rooms. There's a fly loft with different flies that are like the ropes are broken and they're kind of half hanging on the stage. Then you find a costume room. Um... Yeah, there's not a lot in here other than that. It's all general theater stuff. All right, guys, let's... This place is weird. <laughs> kind of gives me the we creeps. Got, we got some badass masks, though, now. Yeah, we do. So, <laughs> so that's fun. Do you do anything with the scripts, Jacob? Or you just leave them there? Not to we lose them. Jacob? I mean... Jeff, can you hear me? G yes? Sorry, my sound is going weird. Oh. <laughs> oh we can tell. <laughs> Do you do anything with the scripts? Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll take the one with the the woman with the fairy whispering in her ear. Okay. I'll I'll take that one. Okay. What would you guys like to do next? Uh, I'm going to go out the front that where we came in. And uh, yep. when I was flying, I saw the big giant glass building. Uh, that yep. piqued my interest because it looks really see, funky. Crixus yeah. is just going to ask Doug to kind of peek back to see if we see any of the gelatinous cubes or anything. All right. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, and I, those mages kind of worry me too so I'll, I'll, I'm going to take a flight up and kind of backtrack a little bit to see where everything is you find the six mages Nothix fighting a gelatinous cube <laughs> <laughs> makes sense you, right. you think one of the one of the Nothix is actually dead but then you don't see his body anywhere until you realize it's inside the gelatinous cube <laughs> they're trying to get it, their friend out nice alright I'll fly heading back. to 16. I'll then, fly back to the group uh, and, and tell them. Ah, we're good. Yeah. They're, they're fighting. Um, the, the shattered... It's not shattered, but it's like a crystal roof marred by a web of cracks. And you see a strange landscape of miniaturized natural features inside. You guys can enter in on the east side of this building. Door lies open. Like, there isn't actually, like, a door to seal this place closed. This is a, um... A menagerie. It's a zoo. Uh, there aren't any animals, I mean, but there's miniature mountain ranges and forests and streams that are all draped in ice now different mixture of landscapes in the middle of this room there's a machine this 10 foot diameter iron wheel held above the ground by a metal brace there's eight barrel sized egg shaped open containers attached to its outer spokes it has a bronze control panel with a lever next to it Valina's looking at it. Does anyone want to assist her on her arcana check to assess what this is? Yeah, uh, I will. My ar arcana's bad. Yeah, mine isn't great either, but I would assist. She has no fucking clue what this is. She yeah. rolled a one and a two. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cool. 
looking in the base of these um, egg-shaped containers, you can see blood stains. Um, also in the middle is like some, like somehow each one of those containers is connected to the middle of this wheel somehow. You see gauges um, that read numbers 1 to 80. There's one gauge that reads numbers 1 to 80. Um, the lever is marked as a, like, start. And then there's, like, a timer that says 8 hours and down to 0. And we'll stop there as you stare at this strange machine wondering what it might be. Maybe I'm there's a chance there's that you talk to the professor, it. he may know. <laughs> but we'll leave it there for this week. Let you wonder about it. Awesome. Yikes. Huh. Interesting. Yeah? I feel like we got a lot accomplished today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more, more again. Got some mm -hmm. badass masks. Yeah, buddy. All right, we are two nerds on quest. We are here every Sunday morning, eight thirty a.m. Central Time, except for next week because it is a holiday. We are not here on holidays, uh, unless <laughs> unless you guys decide that you are around. But I know Genius, you're up north, right? Uh, I think we're going to be around next weekend. Oh. I am actually going to be around. I was going to be up north, but I'm going to be around next weekend. Oh well, maybe we'll we'll talk this week, and uh, we'll yeah. see once we get closer. Um, it posted yeah you may we'll, get we'll some memorial day goodness from us maybe um worst case scenario maybe you know if we're not all available maybe one or two of us can hop on and talk or uh jc has access to the to the t twitch channel now so if he's around and i'm not yeah you know, we'll see what happens there is also the uh possibility of the uh, you know like several different adventures <laughs> we'll figure out what's going on and maybe you'll have something next week yeah, follow us on Twitter. Uh, that's kind of where we put notices and stuff out. Um, join the Discord. Also put notices there. Go to bit.ly slash our fun Discord for all of our links. Uh, support us, patreon.com slash two nerds one quest. Uh, rate and review us wherever you get your podcast from because this does go out in podcast form. Uh, if you are here in chat, give us a follow. You know, get notified when we go live. And, uh, uh, for those listening on the podcast, twitch.tv slash Tom M. Norm, T-O-M-M-N-O-R-M. Put those uh, notifications on, peeps. Yeah. Don't forget to like <laughs> and subscribe, yo. Yo. Amazingly enough, we're about halfway done with this city. I thought it was going to take much longer. Yeah, we're flying pretty quick. Having oh, a flying yeah. scout helps. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. Uh -oh. Anyway. Discord, links, follow, like, subscribe. Give us ratings and reviews. Let us know what you think. Uh, we'd love to hear uh, just in general what you think of the show. Uh, we're always open to suggestions and criticism. And if you get blocked, you get blocked. Meh, not much I can do about that. Just kidding. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, so for me, for Genius, for Quixus, for Mr. DMJC, deuces. Hmm. Why is there blood in the containers? Right? I'll be right back. Well, that was weird. I'm going to have to fix my <laughs> ending image. I went to the ending card and it was just all black. <laughs> Yikes. Interesting. All right. For those of you in chat, go to this link I'm going to put in here. Vote. Oh, come on. 
work you <laughs> fine oh there we go uh time of norm dot showbot dot tv We'll vote on mm. the titles. Now we'll read them out loud here. Uh, so, actually, I'll wait for John to get back before I read them. I usually enjoy watching him laugh. <laughs> mm. were, were you, Kukta, did you see me put the chode one in? Is that what you were kind of giggling yeah. about? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the uh, the proper spelling was the second one, but uh -huh. I got it. I, I got I, the joke. Yeah, I deleted the first one. <laughs> I think it's actually yeah. is it C H O A D. Is that how it is? I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean the the F not the D and D uh, is uh, is definitely not that uh, <laughs> the real place. Uh, on a C H O D. That's way That's worse funny. than I thought it was. <laughs> does not, it, doesn't E at the end make it worse? Not yeah. uh, not even ha not having the chat and not seeing that. It's like I didn't even think about it because you know it's like oh I heard jungles of chult and didn't even think of it. So it's funny. Yeah. Awesome. Gelatinous Roombas. All right, I'm going to read these out because John's just taking too long. Uh, so we have ASMR and Gupta. That's funny. You had the same idea as I did like a little bit later. Uh, yep. We have gelatinous Roombas. We have ASMR, adult spirit meditation retreat. All work and no play make Elvira a dull girl. My heart's on fire, Elvira. Adult spirit meditation retreat. Uh, the hand notices all. Ceilings hanging off the ceilings. A grant in the wild because he popped in uh crixus double dash chocobo meat shields and the jungles of chode so if you are in and i like i like gelatinous <clears throat> oh man i don't want to break the tie though so that's tom's job oh you sh shut up and you vote yeah and, and who knows where jc is gonna go so very interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to do this one to make it a three way and let's see what John does. You would, you turd. I have to. Oh, I'm back. Or wait. John, did you already vote, vote? For any one of those. I did not vote yet. All right. <laughs> Take a look at the title. chance here. <laughs> to <end> this room. <laughs> I like that one. Um. Adult spirit. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Go there. <laughs> oh, they were good ones. Ha ha. Ha ha. A grant in the wild. <laughs> That's cute. Crixus double dash. The jungles of Chode. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it actually references um, Waterdeep. The Waterdeep Adventure and the um, Tomb of Annihilation Adventure. <laughs> Tomb of Annihilation for sounds those, scary. Those, um, Tomb of Annihilation is a deadly, deadly adventure. And it's exploring a, a jungle island of Chult. Got to remember things from today yeah you're about half done we've explored like 12 of the 12 of the 29 locations very nice we've got to kind of start to pare down and figure out what it is that we want to focus on you're making good headway you're finding sections of the right each week and you're finding items now that you're realizing may need you ne may need for pieces of the thing so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah we may need to avoiding combat using aerial maneuvering 
<laughs> John, did we? Did you vote? Is that the final vote? That is yeah, the final vote. All right. The SMR Good Adult deal. Spirit Meditation Retreat. That is the wiener. <laughs> All right, I got to get cruising. Uh, All right, gentlemen, big plans this Sunday. Watch the Brewers continue to roll. Play Fortnite during complete my battle pass. <laughs> Go cap. Oh. Got a, about a week left before that turns over. <laughs> I just plugged into Fortnite again, so I've got to get caught up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been what's playing the, Elder Scrolls What's the online. big get? Um, in the battle pass right now, the top skin is Doctor Strange, which oh. I, I went and saw that yesterday, which was awesome. It is awesome. That is a good good flick. I I really there was some stuff that really I loved having a quote unquote bad guy that I completely agreed with their motivations and desires to do what they were doing. I could it all made perfect sense. It's just really and that interesting. blind fanatical devotion to that ideal is always like, wow, what a concept. <laughs> Have you ever seen uh, Drag Me to Hell, John? No. Same uh, director. Yeah. And I suggest it. It is such a cool, like, it's a horror movie, but it's done with that, like, tongue-in-cheek kind of, like, silliness sometimes. Yeah. It is just such a fun movie. So check cool. that out. I'll have to watch that. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. So, but anyway. All right, I'm going to stop the stream. Thanks.